Right, hi. If you've seen a previous video of mine where I tried CG Geeks, anyone can create this satisfying ball animation blender tutorial. Great, if not, it, it'll be here somewhere. Doesn't matter. Anyway, the next logical step from that would be the classic that everybody does on here, which is Blender Guru's uh, donut tutorial. I am like a little bit of a child and I am too impatient. I'm gonna find a model of a 3D car and put it into some live action footage. Don't know how to do it yet. So I guess the first thing we're gonna need to do is get some live action footage. I think for this, I might just use the old trusty smartphone on a smartphone gimbal because it will be a lot easier just to go out there and, you know, set and quickly get a shot that I can come back in here and start. So just to spice it up a little bit as well, I'm gonna try and do this in four hours. No idea why, just seems like a, a number which would make it quite challenging. Four hours on the clock. Let's go. Okay, all important test before we go out actually. Let's see, I haven't used this like since forever. Let's see if it actually still has battery. <laughs> nice. Great job. Right, so I found this place. It's just over here behind me, you can see. Looks kind of like the kind of place the car would be. It's kind of just a flat Newport concrete that is obviously for some kind of building purpose, but looks ideal, looks like exactly the kind of place a car might be parked, like a parking lot kind of thing. Not that if you could see the actual thing, you'd see that you can't actually drive on here, but who's gonna know, right? Except you guys. Anyway, I'm also gonna shoot one inside in the underground parking of my building complex because just like see, so I've got two different options, see which one looks better. We'll try that, we'll try one here. Let's get it going. Right, so I have got some shots now. I'm not sure. I took like four, maybe five of different kind of moves and like I used the, both lenses because it's kind of weird not having something to stare at and kind of go around it as if it's an imaginary object there. So I, I think it's all right. I filmed a 4K, 24 FPS. Uh, I guess we're just gonna see in the edit and yeah. Okay, so one thing I forgot to do, which I learned from my brief amount of research before coming out here, is that you need an HDRI, which you can either get ones which kind of already are shot online, which kind of match what you need, or or you can just take one on location. I happen to have a Insta360 One X2, which I've barely used because it's a bit gimmicky. Also, thank God I remembered. I guess we can just put it roughly where it's gonna be. Five, four, three, that's center. I don't know why I need the center here, but maybe. And just like that, jobs are good. Okay, we're here in the parking garage. I'm gonna be quick, feels kind of sketchy. Don't want anybody to think that I am filming their car for nefarious purposes. So I'm just gonna take like one or two shots and get the hell out of here. It's nice to be out of the sun, as you can tell. Whew, it is a hot day, 42 degrees outside and a 90% humidity. I am so glad to get back inside and get editing. Boy, do I feel glad to be back inside. So, after doing some research, I've found that there are two main ways of tracking. You can either track in Blender, which seems like the best and most accurate way. The tracker looks awesome. But I've never used it before, so I want to stick with something familiar. So I've found that there are several tutorials online to do with this plugin called AE to Blend. It's not free, unfortunately, but it's only $10. And I mean, $10 for a plugin, not bad. So I'm going to use that, I'm going to do the tracking in After Effects, I'm going to use AE to blend, send it to Blender. Blender will be where I can orient all the world and uh, make the shadow catch, put the 3D model of the car in there and then I think you export it as a PNG sequence with like a transparent background and then you just put it over the, over the original footage back in After Effects. So less talking, let's just get going. We've only got a couple hours left so um, let's do this. Right, so one thing I've just learned the hard way is that you need to make sure when you're going between After Effects and Blender, 
at the stage where you're doing the blender part, the, the cameras, the virtual cameras, virtual cameras, need to have the same focal length. And it's a pretty easy fix. It's just one of those frustrating things that you just can't figure out what, why it's not matching up until you realize that all you need to do is go into your 3D camera in After Effects, copy the exact focal length number, you just highlight, copy, paste, and um, paste it into the, the correct place in, in Blender, and then that sorts everything out. So pro tip, remember that, focal lengths, both the same in both programs. I, I, I'm a loss for word. I have no idea what has gone wrong. I have followed about eight different tutorial steps. I've done things one way, I've done things another way. Every time it works perfectly in After Effects, I bring in the real footage and they never line up. And I've tried everything. I've tried the focal length, the frame rate. Everything seems to be like the two things just don't line up. I have one last thing. I'm gonna try swapping for a different piece of footage. I shot some in the underground car park. Luckily, if it doesn't, you probably would never see this video. Either that or you would just see this computer being thrown out the window. Uh, yeah, let's, let's try again. One eternity later. Alrighty, this time actually worked out beautifully. I changed shot, one that wasn't with the Ultroid camera, with the normal iPhone camera. Now, next problem, trying to import a 3D model. I'm guessing OBJ or FBX, not sure. Let's hope this goes smoother. Right, you can see behind me, I think it's rendering out. I think, fingers crossed. A few moments later. <sighs> right, so I'm guessing if you know anything about Blender, you know what I'm gonna say. And that is the four hours I threw down for this challenge was never ever gonna be enough. I got all the work done within four hours. Turns out though, it took about five and a half or six hours to render out of Blender. And now for the finished result. So one thing I learned from this was that you need to definitely make sure that all of your settings carry across and I, the same in both programs. There's loads and loads of like small little things, like something which will get you frustrated for hours and it is just that you don't know how to click one thing in the menu. Number two, spend more time on tracking than anything else because that will be the most important thing that will make it look realistic. And last thing, Looks too clean. Imperfections. Imperfections are the way to make it fit even better. I saw lots of people adding dirt maps to tires to make them look like they've been actually on a road. Uh, imperfections like smudges or slight small scratches on paintwork to make it look like it's actually a real item in the real world because that kind of stuff happens. And also the shadows. Like I found it so hard to get these shadows here to match these shadows here. They look very similar, but you can see that these ones are a bit darker, whereas these ones are just ever so much more softer and then slightly lighter. First time ever doing this, I think I've got it quite nice. Some of the pits look really good. The reflections and all the stuff in the, of the environment in the actual model look pretty good. There's a lot I could fix for next time, uh, next time I think I'll do a moving shot to make it like up, up the ante maybe. Hit me up in the comments if you think that is something you would like to see. Hit me up in the comments if you have 
any advice or any things that you that I could have done like those settings if there was a setting that you know that I could have oh Alex at two clicks and you could have sorted that problem out hit me up in the in in the comments um until next time guys peace